Hello, all you brothers and peggy sisters. Welcome to the NBS show, where we're about to get our bling on. I am your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. But I am not alone in my ventures. No, not at all. I'm accompanied by planeswalker and podcaster extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Yo, yo, you want crystals? I got crystals, yo. It's just cheap, yo. You want crystals? I got crystals all the world, please, man. Okay, dude, dude we, this is the Crystal Empire, not Crystal... That's not a word! Well, if you want Crystal and Empire... We're chain and we also have our very own mascot, our own personal Pokemon, Sapphire Heart Song. I have a puppy! Will it Hi. evolve? Eventually. Ember, are you going to evolve? No? Okay. Bye. Oh, well, then it'll just have to the come. The puppy has left the building. Never mind. <laughs> Aww. We need more cuteness on this show. Which is why we invited a special guest. Please, everyone, say hello to Will Eyes In. Why, why are you calling me cute? Are you coming on to me? <laughs> I'm telling you to start acting cute. Or no paycheck. Kawaii! <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, I tried. All right, uh, instead, I'm going to need you just to hold still. Uh, no, I said hold still. But stop dodging. Make me! I'm dancing for your amusement. What else do you want? Blood. You you need to be in a Lammy Lamb costume. Oh, God. And the sing the Lammy song. Sorry, but the only Lammy I know is Um Jammer Lammy, who's the best rocker ever. Is it wrong that I only know Lamb Chop? Yeah, Lamb Chop, sing along. This is a song that doesn't end. <laughs> it's a Gravity Falls reference. I'm uh, making all of you. Oh, there you go. The Especially one you, Silver. A, mo- a show I've yet to watch, but apparently now I can see the conspiracy without having to wait between seasons. Ha-ha! <laughs> My patience pays off. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about Gravity What's It's. We're here to talk about the Crystal Empire on the whole. But this is only part one of our discussion. Yeah, the reason why it's part one is because, well, (laughs) we have a lot to say about it. And it's kind of evolving. And who knows, maybe season seven we'll discover more. And who knows, maybe in Equestria Girls we'll get a Crystal Empire. But we kind of got Crystal prepped. Uh, That that might be the closest we get. That doesn't count. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Ah, true. So... Let us instead just briefly start things off. Let's go over their history, which is rather tragic. Right now, it's an amalgam of both the comics and the TV show. The only time we've heard of the ruler prior to Cadence, Princess Amore, is in the Journal of the Two Sisters, and then the uh, Sombra Fiendship is Magic arc, where Princess Amore really shows why a hooves off approach does not really work it can all go to pieces literally Mm. (laughs) (laughs) so i guess the first question is what did you guys think of princess amore we have reviewed the comics we have talked about her but let's get she's the one who in a sense got the ball rolling on their current situation well i think her name fits she was pretty immoral indeed (laughs) i don't know for me she seems to be that benevolent ruler kind of deal where you you have Celestia's method of I'll be in the background, I'll control things in the background so things will be okay. And she's kind of the I'll stay in the shadows kind of deal and try to control things that way. And doesn't seem to work for her. That's what I think. I will say, in trying to control the situation, I didn't get a sense that she was very proactive in that. Then while Celestia made sure Twilight had five friends on hand, uh, Amori never sent more than one pony Sombra's way. When we see it from our perspective of the comic, it almost feels like this whole thing could have been avoided if she was a bit more upfront with Sombra. But that's just, I guess, the price you pay when you're the... uh, leader who thinks, oh no, things will work out if I do these little things. The obvious solution is never the easiest one. Ot comes razor, what is that? (laughs) What we're seeing here, it does reflect on the recent episode, or quote-unquote recent, Top Bolt, where Twilight's method of doing things is to tell things as they are, and Rainbow Dash's method of teaching is to keep it from them. So yeah, this is kind of the same thing, where if they would have told them it would be much better. Eh. Well, 
it's hard to lend some credit to that because I always think she didn't have to tell him right away. I can understand that that was too great a shock for a young Colt to understand. You are actually the offspring of our ancient enemy. If we're not careful, you'll destroy us all. Hey, but don't worry, kiddo. Uh, look, we're sparkly. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I personally think the best way to avoid this was just to, well, uh, whenever the Crystal Fair comes around, you take Sombra and you take, uh, what's her name again? Um, the person. Radiant. Yeah, you take Hope. You send them to Canterlot for a vacation, a week long vacation for however long that Crystal Fair is. Just send them there. And this could have been all avoided. Vacation, all I ever wanted. Well, actually, if they went that route, then instead, Sombra would then start to think that maybe uh, there's something wrong with him. It's like, I've never been to a Crystal Fair. I want to go to a Crystal Fair. You know what? I'm going to actually sneak back to the Crystal Fair this time. And because of that, problems happen. But at least that way, the leader would be seen more proactive in trying to prevent a problem. Yeah, true. But at the same time, too, when he comes back, he'll feel all the pain and he'll be wondering, why am I feeling all the pain? And here is where Amore would have dropped the bomb on Sombra, saying that you're our um, longtime enemy and your parents are kind of a jerk and send you up here to spy on us. We know all this, but we still take care of you. I hope you do make the right choice. You're a wizard, Sombra. <laughs> Actually, that's that sounds more like a guilt trip. I always spend all this time working and trying to help you, and I hope you won't destroy us or anything. I mean, it's not like we've invested all that money in travel, or even. <laughs> but at the same time, to think about it, isn't that, um, a, a, well, I won't say better, but isn't that a method of, well, quote-unquote, controlling the problem? I was. It is a method, but I'm not sure it's one that you, one can rely on. I always come back to when Sombra finally made his move on the crystal and Amore shows up and she says, oh, you've got a choice. And well, the choice is take the crystal and become our enemy or die for the ponies who never really treated you as one of their own. That is an awful choice. If she had made it so Sombra knew that he had the love and support of the Empire, of more than just Radiant Hope, I think he would have chosen the ponies more. Yeah, yeah, that, that could have uh, been a better solution for saving the crystal, well, preventing the crystal empire being sent to a thousand years of disappearance. I don't really remember what it is. But uh, we can fan theory all we want. In the end, the crystal empire faded. In the end, she done messed up. Oh, yeah, that's true. And Amore is still in pieces in a state of... Mostly dead. Yeah. To which then she has to be going through a state of I have no mouth and I must scream. <laughs> they don't want to revive her right now. If they revive her, she's probably going to be not evil, but completely insane. Uh, probably. She's been having a bad day. Oh, yeah, true that. Because you had a bad day, taking one down. But, but hey, that's Amore. <laughs> oh. So me what you see back in old Napoli, that's Amore. I thought they were saying that's guacamole. <laughs> amore. <laughs> uh. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's, if you see a great deal with a charming appeal, that's Amore. <laughs> 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 uh. Uh, this guy. But, Silva? So Amore done messed up. Sombra did his thing for a little bit. And truth be told, the flashbacks of the season five finale hint that the Umbrum and all that didn't exist. Mm. So this is where the show and the comics, I think, divert, which is always unfortunate. I don't know. I'm actually kind of, I'm actually kind of glad for it, to be honest, but that's just me. Oh, how so? Well, We'd have to get into the whole um, league of not quite evil ah, and yes. that whole thing, and that, that's getting away from uh, the Crystal Empire itself. Either way, Sombra ha apparently did not unleash the Umbrum, probably a good choice if they exist, but now the Empire is out of place in time. Yep. They, 
They are the cable of Equestria, a man out of time. Yeah, they they are the Sleepy Hollows of no Sleepy Hollows. What is that Shyamalan movie that he did? The Village. Yeah, The Village of. Equestria. I was actually going to say. I was actually going to say uh, a more accurate thing would be the Irish legend of Brigadoon. Ooh. Yes, I think that's what it's based off of. Ooh, please do tell. Um, the the legend goes that it was a city that well the the tale varies depending on who's telling the story but the one I at least was told that it was a city that was uh, cursed by fairies or blessed it depends they were given basically uh, uh, immortal life in this uh, city of Brigadoon but to protect it uh, or curse it there again varies on the story you're telling the city itself would only appear for uh, a couple weeks or a couple days. Again, it really depends on who's telling the story. And it would appear, basically, in uh, in the countryside, and then it would disappear in, in the fog and not be seen for years on end. And what passes for a couple days in Brigadoon would pass for years, if not more, in the real world. So you could spend probably a month there and come back out and find, wait a minute, where, where's everybody? What's this? What do you mean we're not doing Betamax anymore? What the heck is Blu-ray? <laughs> Uh, Blu-ray? What's Blu-ray? It's all digital media now. It's all on the online with the Netflix and the streaming and the... <laughs> I don't know. 1080p and the bad's a poiga. <laughs> and the hoiden? <laughs> uh, but still, oh wow, I, I did not know that. Or, uh, I, that, that is a good story. It was, it was a musical. It's also a musical. I saw it. <laughs> so. Hmm. All right. <laughs> And uh, Silver, you were going to say something? Well, mo- mostly observing that with this comes a culture that is basically transplanted from the past. Unfortunately, we really haven't gotten to explore that very much. That just seems really untapped right there. I mean, fish out of water stories are m- m- what I love the most. I love fish out of water st- stories. Someone being put in a completely unfamiliar situation and seeing how they have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And... Time uh, fish out of water stories, you know, like uh, oh, what was it? it Captain was a movie America, about a caveman. Oh, okay. Well, okay, Captain America, but it, it was a it was an eighties or a nineties movie about a caveman who gets unfrozen and gets stuck in the oh. suburbs of California. Encino Man. Encino Man, that's it. But as Will said, it is untapped, and it that's probably my greatest lament for the Crystal Empire. I mean, they introduced it. And when it first hit the scene, it was like, oh, this is great. A new setting, mysterious magic. You can have new traditions. Twilight can encounter magic she's never seen before. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of potential. And yet at this stage, I'm like, can you guys even name a crystal pony? Uh, no. Nah. Uh, Flash Sentry. <laughs> no. Nah. But honest- we'll, get, we'll get to him. Yeah. But honestly, I have... Wait, wait. I, I can name some crystal ponies. Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. Oh, wait, that's Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I have to say that that ship has sailed. Uh, reintroducing the crystal pony into modern society and making them the fish out of water kind of story, that ship has sailed. Because it's yeah. been, what, um, three, four, five, six, like four seasons now. And I, I'm sure they're all acclaimed to the modern society kind of format deal. So they're A-OK now. I, I don't know. I don't know if they're totally acclimated because they never go anywhere. Right now, I get the sense the Crystal Empire has turtled up. Mm. But honestly, didn't we see Crystal P- Pony in Manhattan once for a background pony scene? If they had... We actually, it, we actually have seen them. We've also seen them at the uh, Rainbow Falls with the giant... Um, the sale trader. of everything. Mm. Yeah, the trading thing was going on. There were crystal ponies there. That was yeah. that that was one of the rare times I remember seeing them. I don't remember them in Manhattan. Maybe in Bergen. I'm not sure. Like it's a possibility, but I'm not hundred percent sure. The thing is that I don't feel like they get out very much. So much so that I almost forget they're even in the world. Mm, that's true too. So the crystal ponies, uh they're turtles, they're hermits. And also another thing that you mentioned, Silver, about them having magics and whatnot, and Twilight learning from them. All of them are Earth ponies. Oh, 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 I see how it is, Norman. I'm learning a whole new side of you I didn't know. I'm not sure I like what I hear. 
But but it's true. Have you seen them? The majority of them are Earth ponies. Well, quote unquote crystal ponies, but still. Oh, I see how it is. I see no horn, no horn, no adorn. I see how it is, Norman. You tribalist. But it's true. <laughs> No, yeah, man. so the, so the crystal thought... ponies are, if they're mostly earth-based, well, that makes sense, because crystal itself is a mineral of the earth. So, but what separates a crystal pony from an earth pony, uh, aside from a new coat of paint? I Sweet bling. Yeah, and their eye shapes, the way that their uh, retina looks. Oh, yeah. Great. So they got to have a very special eye doctor look at them for their their special eyes. The special eyes. The spectral eyes. The special eyes. Yeah, m- maybe I'm I wrong. Like the crystal pony design, at least. Well, well, no, well, Norman. That's the first step towards overcoming your speciesism. Yeah, I thought better of you. I'm not. It's easier to it's easier to overcome it if you hate them all equally. <laughs> Which, you know, on a certain level, I do because they just don't do anything. Oh well. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk about the Crystal Ponies crisis management, mm-hmm. which is to say, run away or stay put in the worst possible spot of danger. When I think of the Crystal Ponies and how they handle trouble, I always think of one scene from the titular Crystal Empire. A stallion looks over and he sees Sombra's dark crystals growing. And he has a momentary freak out, but then Rarity holds up one of those silly hats and all of a sudden, he just smiles, goes back to his crystal form, and trots off like nothing happening. And it's just like, wait, what? What? Ooh, so shiny. they're easily distracted children. They're that. easily distracted children. Immensely distracted, it seems. <laughs> I don't think even I could get distracted by a a silly hat. Like, really? I mean, sure, maybe a Pokemon, but not a silly hat, for God's sake. <laughs> We'll, we'll see. We talked about how the Crystal Empire went into hiding. We talked about the Crystal Ponies themselves. And I think the only thing that we can discuss now is the rulers? Or is there something else I'm missing? Well, let's see. You're not quite done with crisis management. Ah, yes. Crisis management. Running away. That works in the Holy Grail. On, or staying put, as with Flurry Hearts crystalling. Ah, yeah. Where they just stayed put because they didn't want to lose their seats, even as subarctic temperatures encroach. This is a culture, in my eyes, that is so used to being protected by the crystal heart, they've given up their autonomy. Ah, they have become lazy and lax in the welcome peace of utopia. (laughs) And let's not forget there is a lack of priority. Yeah. Well, they just assume everything's going to be taken care of for them, and that's a rather unhealthy, contemptible attitude. But it's also a very common herding instinct among horses. Hmm. And yet we've never witnessed this in other parts of Equestria, have we? Or have we? I'm well, think- ponies, ponies tend to tend to panic very easily, but I'd say with the crystal ponies, it tends to seem a lot more extreme. Extreme! Extreme! Uh, 90s kids gonna have a feeling of that. But honestly, I, I don't know if the crystal ponies are just dense or really, really, really want their spot. If there's a hurricane or whatever it is, like, don't care, I'm keeping my spot. Ain't nothing moving me. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Having, having lived in Minnesota when some of our horrible winters happen and we got people camping outside of uh, sporting events. Oh. Trust me, sports fans will go to the extra mile to be sure they get the seats they want or even sitting in a stadium that's freakishly cold. Uh, so are you sure that's not people on Bl- Black Friday? Hey, oh. <laughs> hey, hey, I did the retail shtick, man. You do not talk about that. I have blacked those dates out. They are gone from my memory. They are so suppressed, I'm pretty sure they're creating a tumor in my left ha- uh, hemisphere. So you're saying they're blacked out Friday. <laughs> but ain't Black Friday happens on Thursday? Well, you start people start camping out on Thursday nights. Um... To my great sadness, they skip Thanksgiving, one of the most low-maintenance 
purest family based or friends based holidays you can imagine. I'm really sad that that's never gotten the proper recognition. Oh, but still- actually, on a completely gigantic segue, which has nothing to do with ponies whatsoever, but does have to deal with that subject, the Mall of America, the second largest mall in the entire world and the largest mall in the United States, also home to Minnesota. Huh, Minnesota, another point. Anyway, this gigantic mall has just announced that for this holiday season, they are going to be entirely closed during Thanksgiving. Oh, what? That's good? Yes. 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 That means they're letting their employees actually spend time with their families. Yay. Exactly. But, no. but, uh, but Black Friday, Black Friday, all bets are off. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, too, um, you still have Cyber Monday, so that's cool. Well, Cyber yeah. Monday you can do from your home in your underwear if you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, oh, I have mental... that image in my head. Oh, God, thanks for uh. Oh, what, what are you well, envisioning? Well, it's not far off from reality, so I'm in not your... that creeped out. <laughs> in your underwear. Oh, God. Exactly. Underwear. You know what? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Very... Anyway. Thank you very much. Anyway, so talking about the Crystal Ponies underwear, they don't wear it. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that was an easy topic. At least he didn't say in the nude, so there's that. They're Starkers. Wait a minute. All these ponies are a bunch of nudists. <laughs> Ponyville's a nudist colony. <laughs> even even the titular Fancy Pants does not wear pants. <laughs> pants. Uh, we're wearing pants. He sits pants. upon a throne of life. Uh, but getting right back on topic. All right, well, we've talked about the Crystal Ponies as residents, but we haven't talked about the second-tier characters within. And before we get to the royal family, it's a little troubling to me that the the ponies and other beings I can name within the Crystal Empire are actually not Crystal Ponies. We've got Flash Sentry, Sunburst, and for a very brief period, Thorax. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm on the wiki page right now, and I have the list here. Um, you got Amethyst, uh, Mirburn, I think that's the librarian pony, and you got, who now, uh, Bright Smile, one of the, well, technically generic background pony that doesn't really, yeah, you know what, doesn't really mean anything, yeah. I'm sorry, Norman, they, they have named ponies in books and expanded media, so it's not untrue that the, the populace has gone unnamed. But none of them have had an actual impact in the show. And even in the expanded universe, they're usually just there to say, hi, Princess Cadence, you're awesome. Boop, boop. How to tell you're important in the Crystal Empire? You go by anime logic. If you're animated differently from the background, then you're important. <laughs> Huzzah! Yay! Well, actually, anime logic would be whoever has the bright, colorful hair. But they all have bright, <laughs> yeah, colorful that's hair. Not- that's who are, how you determine who's the main character as well. Like, who has the craziest hair? We're, we're going by Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. Oh, you need to find the key. Well, I found it in here. How do I know? It's animated differently from the background. <laughs> uh, Episode 7. Look pers- it up. Personally, I always go with uh, who has the most absurd armor. So Alphonse Elric is the main character of Full Metal Alchemist? Uh, you know what? Well, obviously he's the full metal alchemist. He's full and he's metal. <laughs> no, he isn't. That's Edward. You... That's not a word. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. Ooh <laughs> we've we've hit a we've hit a tender spot. I'm afraid this conversation is uh, is coming up short. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. How about we get back to the actual conversation? I'm sorry. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think we got a little off track there. <laughs> yeah. I've just noticed that over time, my fascination with the Crystal Empire weakened. I've begun to see it more as a holding pen for characters who are important to the main six, but can't be featured every episode. Hmm. And said character you're talking about is Flash, right? Oh, Flash no, Sunburst. Sunburst. I'm sure if uh, Timber Spruce ever has a pony counterpart, he'll end up in the Crystal Empire. <laughs> Where he and Flash can trick can glare at each other all day. <laughs> Let's see here. The royal uh, couple. The royal couple imports a Twilight. Still trying to figure out what they do for the country. Mm-hmm. Aside from getting kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like the nobles uh, and the royals over in the UK. What are they good for? 
Oh, they make awesome movies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You tell me the King's Speech ain't awesome, we're going to have issues. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, um, besides those characters that we mentioned, um, we don't really get the full story on the backgrounds. Like, we don't have any Crystal Pony background that we make fan fictions for. Unlike Ponyville, we have an abundance of background stories for them, even art. Like, just go on film fiction and you'll get a whole bunch of categories to browse upon. Like, if you just go there and look for characters, you are going to have a lot. The thing with uh, Ponyville as well, as compared to it, is that we know a lot about Ponyville as the city itself. We know about its history. We know how it was founded. We know what its um, infrastructure looks like. Who does this? Who does what? Uh Ha, um, barnyard bargains for economy and mayor mayor and all the people running at uh, the Ponyville Town Hall and just um, apparently every other week there's a celebration going on apparently. Yeah. It's to celebrate the latest crisis that they managed to live through. Thanks to Pinky. There is a greater feeling of familiarity with Ponyville which inspired people to flesh it out. It's funny that there's so much there is a lot of drama and tension one could have in the Crystal Empire. But fans don't seem to want to take advantage of that as much. Well, I think this goes back to us not knowing much about it. Um, a good example is uh, Manhattan. Like, what could you say about Manhattan? It hasn't been shown a lot on the show. Like, I think in my recollection, it's only been shown two times, right? Three times if you count Cheese Sandwich, uh, his very brief flashback. Yeah, and four if you're counting yeah. the comics. But the thing is... Manhattan is based off of a human city. Yes. Manhattan, you know, New York. So we can actually do parallels of that to New York. Okay, it's a pony parody of New York. Same thing with Winneapolis or Appaloosa. It's like we already have cities that we can attribute that to. The Crystal Empire is completely fantastical. So it's a blank slate. We, we only have as much information as they're willing to give us. And we can only do guesswork as to what um, everything is. And when you have to do too much guesswork, then it becomes mm, not as fun. I have to go on something of a tangent. A while back, I wrote stories for the anime series Zoids. Zoids? You mean those <gasps> animals? Oh, Zoids! <laughs> oh, I, gosh. That was, so that, that was I a could... piece of my childhood, man. You, you're making me happy here. Oh, I thought I was making you bored, Yanni McYonerton. Oh, no, no. I was I, wasn't, I think I was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was like, yeah, that wasn't a yawn. That was a, that was a cheer. That was me going. Yeah. Unless you've been zombified, that's <laughs> one weird cheer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, Continue. I'm being mean. But as I started writing this thing, I sort of realized just how little their world was fleshed out. I mean, there's all manner of paraphernalia, but basically it was just Zoid Battle of the Day. And you're like, okay, that's fun in the cartoon, but I'm looking for a little more meat. I'm looking for a little more fiction. And basically, I'm creating a world from scratch. I might as well just start writing my own original work, Wait, which I did. I, I have to... Wait, you did? Yeah, no, no. I, oh, I yeah, have to got... say something. I have to point something out. Act. This is Silver Quill, creating fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's what? something that I never hear. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. What? Have I not introduced you to my 573 Luna ship fix with me? No, not yet. I would love to read them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, hey, hey, dude, we should exchange fix, man, because I got some wild and crazy stuff here, man. <laughs> Yo, dude, that'd be totally cool. Oh, uh, I'm so high right now. Uh, oh, God. No. I well, quit flying and get down here. Silver and, uh, will I... Will. Ziz, mm -hmm. I think it's Zin. Bleh. <laughs> Bleh. They, uh, ah. I think they went back to the 70s. Oh, wow. But and my dog is getting into stuff. <laughs> the 70s. Okay, I'm not that old, <laughs> Sapphire. Uh, Let's... But anyway. I'm... Yeah, I'm trying. I'm an, I'm an 80s child. Thank you. <laughs> you act like you're in the 70s, though. Me? Uh, well, I'm a total 90s kid. And only 90s kids remember the 90s, <laughs> which is a weird phenomenon where... Those ten years are completely blanked out of everyone's memory. No one even remembers Bill Clinton being elected, except me. I remember that. I I remember that once upon a time, a presidential sexual scandal was the worst embarrassment we suffered 
I never thought I'd be nostalgic for those days. <laughs> Uh, but carrying on, talking about leaders, um, we have. I don't know if I can. <laughs> well, talking about leaders, we have um, Arwen Cadence. So they're the do they like the uh, by default leaders of the Crystal Empire? So yay! I, the de facto yeah. leaders. Hmm. Actually, I always laughed when when they, it was like, "Behold, the Crystal Princess has returned." They're just like, "Hang on." Crystal hearts flying really nearly to some tarts hooves does not is not a legitimate form of government. <laughs> well, there's no uh, elected. There's no elected will of the people. Hey, right. you know, you know what? This this isn't too bad. I mean, at least she didn't like fish out a so get, get a sword out of a lake and you know pull it out of a stone or something. Oh, I mean, so that's even, so that's like King Arthur. <laughs> Now we're seeing the violence inherent in the system. I'm being oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, now no, that's a horrible idea. Arthurian lore applied to the Crystal Empire. Okay, <laughs> who's Cadence gonna cheat on with? Oh no, oh. no, no. But Wait, Flash, that makes somber, that makes somber Mordred. Oh, Ooh, Flash, Flash Sentry for Lancelot. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, the fanfics they flow. <laughs> uh, well, but well, anywho, back on topic. So yeah, they're the leaders of the Crystal Empires. Oh well. This has been a hot debate for you, Silver, because um, <laughs> in previous um, reviews, you have stated how much you dislike them. I dislike what, what hasn't been done with them. I dislike that they have they had all this marvelous potential, but because they're the fairy tale couple, I think the staff is kind of doesn't want to diminish that appeal. So they're kept in the background. And here's the funny thing. Meta speaking, I think the Crystal Empire exists because they realized, hey, we've introduced these two characters. They can't be on hand all the time. We need to get them somewhere far away so we can keep the main cast in the spotlight. I can see that. So, um, I read on the review section of our podcast, the Ambitious Reviews, and I saw this one comment that, um, well, Here's what he says. Um, Will, could you please read this? Yes. Silver's problem is that they don't do anything on screen. Show, don't tell. It's one of the most important rules of storytelling, especially film, and the reputation of the princesses violates it time and time again. They may not be main characters, but without any actual demonstration of the power and wisdom we are told they have, it rings hollow. It's why Silver Quill appreciated the display in the crystalline when uh, Cersei and Luna uh, fought off the weather. It's one of the few times we see them contributing to something instead of uh, either delegating or being captured. Well said. Also well read. <laughs> Yay. And here's something well read. Uh... Oh, oh, hang on. Before we do this, we're not making fun of our viewers. No, no, no. This no, is something, no, no. This is okay. something that's being pointed out. And, well, it kind of, kind of well has to be brought up because pointing it out like you dislike Cadence and Shining Armor and why people have points to bring out and Will, please read this, see how it goes oh, here it My goes. bigger issue is with how he treats them is it's proven more able to analyze, reflect, and talk about in a positive or at least neutral way any character even with less development and screen time than the royal couple like Flash Sentry or the Cakes as proven to be willing, as proven to be able to and willing to look at the implications at what isn't seen but can be extrapolated from what we do, and yet seems unwilling to do that with them. It's the unfairness that really kind of annoys me, and how he seems to arbitrarily hold them to some higher standard than he does to any other character. Well, let's talk about higher standards first, because they are royalty. They are supposed to be the leaders. I think it's fair to hold royalty and leaders to higher standards. The paragons. The paragons. Cadence is often presented as not just pursuing an ideal, but is the ideal. The ideal of love. Yeah, true, Dad. Love. But. Oh, God. But as for extrapolating, this is headcanon, mostly. Because I've not seen them be proactive, I really can't extrapolate. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Here's what I've seen about Caden so far. She can zap you into love. 
i.e., you guys know how I feel about brainwashing. Yeah, yeah. So it feels like a false harmony. But the question is, is she just making them fall in love, or is she just rekindling what was already there? I would say rekindling. That's my hit cannon theory. That's what I want to say, because that's the least destructive interpretation in my eyes. Mm -hmm. But even that is dangerous, because you're not fixing or addressing the problems that caused the falling out in the first place. It's funny, if if you listen in to the, squ the squabbling couple in Cadence's flashback, mm -hmm. they talk about, you don't like my friends, I'm sick of paying for all this stuff. There's some legitimate stress going on there. Hmm, okay. And with her with her quick fix, none of that gets addressed. Mm, very true. Yeah, well, now, now that you mention it, and, well, you know what, it's, I have to disagree because I need to go watch that episode to judge it for myself. <laughs> That's the safe route. Go. That is the safe route go, to answer. Go forth. But I can't extrapolate how to describe this. Sometimes when you take a deeper look at characters, sadly, you realize, man, there's not a lot to go on here. Yeah. My experience has been that fans have adopted these two characters. Uh into being very exceptional that much like love itself, it means different things to different people. But the problem is I can't really celebrate these characters based on one person's headcanon about them. There's too much of, Oh, we'll feature them, but you fill in the blanks. Well, no, come on, work with me here. Episode work with me. And here's where I have to agree with you on that aspect because Personally, for me, as a reviewer, I try to separate my head cannons from what is given. The kind of how a lawyer or attorney looks at cases where I only take in the facts, where what is shown to me is the fact. I don't insert head cannons or I don't insert things that are not um, okay by the court as evidence. For example, if I were to put a review up for a character review for Sunset Shimmer. You guys all know how I feel about her, right? So, obviously, I am going to be biased towards her, saying how awesome she is, saying how she's the best waifu out there, and throw Fluttershy out to the gutter, because new waifu, Sunset. But that's all hate canon and fan fiction that I've read. In all honesty, we haven't got much out of her. Um, Out of the four movie we have, yeah, they're awesome, but nothing more. With Fluttershy, we've seen her develop from season one to now. So there's more to debate. There's more to talk about. I will say this. Uh, looking at some of the episodes, I can actually point out two flaws for Cadence and Shining Armor. And this is part of where the frustration comes in. Shining Armor does not know how to delegate. In the multitude times he's had to juggle, he's fallen apart. Even prepping for his wedding... He couldn't even invite his own sister in person because he claimed he was so busy, which, by the way, that's baloney. Well, technically, he is. I mean, sorry, technically, he was busy because of the pending changing attacks and whatnot. But seriously, dude. Well, that that basically said we've received a vague threat against the question. OK, uh, that's a lot to go on. But more importantly, how to describe this, he could have delegated overseeing Cantalot's defense to one of his trusted staff, assuming he has some, but he didn't. And so I think there's a lack of delegation on his part. With Cadence, she's actually right off the bat asked someone, well, do you think I should do this? Do you think uh, I should cancel the, cri the crystalline? Should I not wear the ceremonial uh, uh, main style? And everyone's always, and unfortunately she's gotten bad advice. But her impulse is to ask someone else to give her the answer. Well, I would say that she's asking for advice, not giving an answer. And, well, that's a positive way to look at it, really. But even so, she's always gone with that advice, which has usually worked to her detriment. Mm. I, don't see in I don't see Cadence working to gain the confidence of a new ruler. And more importantly, when she does take the wrong advice... Someone always throws themselves in defense. No, oh, it was my bad idea. I'm sorry. It's like, you know what? Respondent superior. 
the princess should set an example and take the responsibility for what did or did not go well. Hmm. True. And at the same time, too, um, with what we're given here about Cadence, well, she's the ideal big sister um, idea, like the figure, whatever you want to call it. And yes, she's kind, she's all that. But as a leader, she kind of falls down a bit in terms of what she can do and how her action is. A good example is with Thorax. Um, there's one changeling in the kingdom. So everybody in the kingdom scatters around searching for this one changeling. Like there's no systematic way of looking for things. And I have told you guys about how I felt about that. You go in groups of two. Will says groups of three, which is even better. But there's no systematic search for them. And the problem with that is all of them are pegasi at the time so there's no magic scanning thing if they do have magic because they're crystal ponies show it because we would love to see it and more show cannon please yes yeah, so we've, we've got lots of head cannon uh and some you know i think we're planning to talk about cadence in full with uh someone who is very much a cadence fan because this i don't want to make this a one-sided argument but Sometimes the show tells me a, ca- a character is one way, I see them in a different way, and that that dissonance is very frustrating. Yeah, but still, that's the rulers of the Crystal Empire. I keep hoping they'll have an episode all their own, but with the introduction of Flurry Heart, I hate to say it, but usually when uh, when a mom, when two characters become a mom and a dad, their role in the show reduces even further because now it's all about the baby which is just un- like real life well to say through to an extent to an extent you still have dreams and ambitions but they have to be secondary to this young life you are for which you are now responsible except <laughs> i still lament when Caden said shining armor you were supposed to be watching the baby hey, princess it's your kid too i know you got a lot going on but help out Oh, yeah. even, th- even, even then, honey, you're an alicorn. You're probably the only one with enough power to handle the baby. Why are you giving it to your mere mortal husband? <laughs> Who, let's face it, does not have a great track record. Yeah, true that. Uh, he really doesn't. Oh but God. let's get away from them for a bit because, well, that one guest we have who is really enthusiastic to talk about them is not here. So let's move them aside so we can talk about something else like what does the crystal empire do for its economy well we actually that is a, a good question we actually got a tiny hint of that Ooh. Priest, uh, uh, but it was through a book uh, we must, we must uh, once, oh, a book wow. i probably didn't read wow, because you, reading wow the, the enthusiasm is strong with these people i'm cool <laughs> I'm, I'm hyped for it i want to know because how do they make their money? Because an empire without income is basically land without, well, basically a land waiting to be take o- taken over by changing things. Easy, they sell their magic crystals, Norman. Didn't you see how much that one red diamond was back in Spike at Your Service? Oh wait, no, that's the wrong episode. It's the pet one from season three. <laughs> uh, but Silver, you were saying? All right, in Pinkie Pie and the Rockin' Pony Party Palooza, or the Triple P. Which I would mention is canon, by the way. At least referenced. Cross-media continuity. Pinkie's family, Sans Marvel, shows up, and basically they're in a tough bind. Their rock farm is not selling rocks because crystals are in vogue. Basically, the Crystal Empire apparently mines and exports the crystals of the surrounding landscape. Told ya. And they sell it for, I'm assuming, architecture. Told ya. And I'm sure jewelry. Nah, I want. And to apparently make Sapphire Heart Song squee. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so we can call the Crystal Empire the bling capital. <laughs> they are totally the bling capital. They're the blingiest blingers that ever blinged. All right, you then. Eee. Bling it, and you'll miss it. 
So basically, their economy is based on mining. Then, all right, I can buy it. That's the assumption. I'm. Other than that, a lot magma underneath. Then. All, but the only thing I ever hear about it is light and love. That's all they ever do. Light and love, light and love, light and love. And I'm like, you know what? You can't sell light and love. You can, Unless you're selling it to changelings. I, really, all you can do at that point is, um, oh, how to say this tactfully. Light and love. I, you can sell maybe some substances that would help with the light and the love bra. <laughs> Peace to the universe and all that. It, and the funniest thing you guys remember the light show the Crystal Empire put on uh-huh. uh, when the, when it was revived? You know, spread across Equestria. Haven't seen that since. Aurora Borealis. Yeah, their personal Borealis has not really shown up a lot unless they get what they want. In which case, that goes back to my concern that this is the most selfish of countries. Horribly mm-hmm. selfish. If the country is only known for light and love, and that only happens if the residents are always pleased, there's a certain note of entitlement to that. But honestly, when it comes to the Crystal Empire, let's just say this. It's a good spot for tourism. And tourism is one of, well, it happens in real life too. So tourism is a good way to promote or to get income. And well, by uh, using tourism, you get a lot of income from other countries or other capitals or whatever it is, like from the Griffin to uh, Manhattan to even and even Candlelot. So you have that. And it's been proven with the equestrian games. And yet the, the thing that I always come back to is that you go to tourist spots because they serve some sort of purpose, even if it's relaxation. The Crystal Empire, as near as I can tell, they don't really market themselves to guests. They just sort of like, we're here, we're crystal deal with it, brah. <laughs> well, we do know that they have the Crystal Empire Spa and a huge crystal library that's really cool. And I, I don't know, I mean, that's what I'm looking at the wiki here, the spots that they have, the square, the castle, library, and spa, and stadium. So they have that. So it's all a tourist attraction, if you ask me. Well, you know one thing they don't have? What? An alternate adjective. No. What? What's what's not crystal? Do they ever mm. just have the really big stadium? <laughs> the, the honking big spa? Oh, my God. Oh, God. The really awesome store? <laughs> yeah. No, it does. I'm, actually, that sounds like something where she exists for real. The really awesome store. It's like, you didn't even try on the name. <laughs> but what if, if they, what if they can't use crystals? Like, the zinc store. Or... <laughs> The Cubert Zirconium uh, <laughs> well, Stadium. So, well, that's when they how they make the crystals, though, right? Well, that's when they get that that zinky feeling. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm really, really not sure what more we can cover, except maybe what does the future hold for these crystal ponies? Are they can they serve a function in the greater scheme or a or a story? Or better better yet, how can they assist the main six in furthering their own stories. Mm, true, but honestly, for me and how I see things in this uh, situation here is, uh, answer is yes, the Crystal Ponies or the Crystal Empire will or can play a big part in the future for uh, MLP. Because, well, it's untapped potential. There's so much things that you could do. Plus, you got Flurry Heart who is growing. Who knows? By season seven, she may be the same size as, well, probably, uh, first season one Apple Bloom. Who knows, right? So we have wait, that wait, there. Wait. Has Apple Bloom grown since we first saw her? Uh, no, none of the Kmart no. Crusaders have grown an inch. Well, Which is gonna... I'd just be kind of worried for them if Flurry Heart is getting as big as they and their their growth is stunted. <laughs> well, or even worse, the fact that the 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 the, the cake babies they haven't grown either is like what is with this alicorn metabolism? Oh no, <laughs> it's like a Ramire thing from Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but uh, th- that's my opinion on set matters. I do believe that they have potential to expand they have a potential to tell a good story so yeah i am looking forward to when it comes yep. 
what what views do you have on this? I don't have anything in mind. Like how how does the Crystal Empire actually help the main six other than piling hot plot convenience? They probably have another villain hid beneath the the city or something. You know, just another ancient evil from a thousand years ago waiting to be released. So. Maybe they're maybe providing. there could be some monster in the Crystal Empire, like that's made of boron or something. I don't know. <laughs> and, oh, and he'll bore Equestria to death. Yes, the main six must overcome their greatest enemy yet: a boring holiday slideshow. <laughs> and this is what with... wasn't there a comic like a while back that featured? Actually, I have it right here with the um. There goes my stuff. Uh, the uh. What? It was the Shining Armor Friends Forever comic with Twilight, and it was this uh, one creature that. Oh yeah, Sombra the worm. The worm thingy that yeah reads stories. Yeah, I remember him. Poor guy. Monster tracks. Blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Crystal ghost. Apparently. See that even even their ghosts have to use that adjective. I mean. We couldn't have the spooky ghost. It was the crystal ghost. Come on, people. Get a dictionary. Yeah, the crystal ghost who loves to read for some reason. I don't know. Well, when you wake up in the crystal morning, you're going to have some crystal coffee with some crystal eggs and crystal bacon. Oh, that that sounds painful. Crunchy. I I know I'm obsessed with crystals, but yeah, that sounds very painful. And when you have a little trouble pooping, you get your crystal suppository. (laughs) Oh, no. Wait. Which does not go in smoothly. <laughs> oh no. But guys, come on. They have a lot of things, oh. right? Like, uh. No, no. Norman they, they made have, something of the Crystal Empire that wasn't labeled as Crystal. Well, okay. Oh. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, okay, okay. Um, they have a petting zoo with crystal hues and they have. That doesn't count. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's see. Uh, they have, um, Crystal jousting? Doesn't crystal count berries. Crystal. Yeah, yeah, crystal berries. Um, they have a petting zoo with many hues. No, use. Use, yeah. Use. They have a, but, they, they flew a flag of many hues. Oh, yeah. Which really, a crystal flag. I mean, seriously, whoever, whoever, whoever set up that rhyme seriously put themselves in a corner because it's like, <laughs> they flew a flag of many hues. It's like, oh crap, what rhymes with hues? Hues. <laughs> uh, Although, uh, Although, have you ever thought that what they really did was take a bunch of guys named Hugh and just, you know, skin oh, them no, alive? No. That's that's pretty dark. No. I, I, I don't I'm know. Right. The, okay, la- the last guy, the last question. guy. What does the Crystal Empire have that isn't labeled as crystally or crystal or has anything to do with like crystals in it? Wait. Well, I was just going to say the last guy I knew who was named Hughes died in the phone booth repeatedly. Okay. Oh. oh. Well, that got depressing fast. Yeah. <laughs> But although, although maybe maybe that's the the next trick. Rarity comes to the Crystal Empire to show them there's a new fashion. It's called cotton <laughs> or diamonds. Uh. No, no, it's jeans. 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 Yeah. Rarity starts the jean craze. <laughs> uh. Prince, she creates jeggings. And Rarity Princess Cadence creates. must must stop Rarity to preserve their way of. Life. Or you could have them wear <laughs> tight leather pants. Can't no, be right. Can't Can't be be Norman, that has horrible connotations to it. <laughs> Woody's wearing leather. This is like, okay, where did it come from? Uh, so from the magic mirror. For a reason. No, no, yeah, from the goes. magic mirror. Think about it, yeah? Can't beat my, can't beat my, uh, no, you can't beat my uh, leather uh, shoes. <laughs> I have got some leather shoes. Ah, oh. uh, you go abridged. Yes, but besides that, um, I think Will has something to say. Oh no, I was just gonna. Uh, my point was already made about how when it comes to the Crystal Empire, there's really just it has opportunity, but we need more substance if we're gonna say more about it. We just we can suppose to the ends of the earth, but there's only so we're we're we're, we're basically nibbling off a bone that has so little meat here. Oh yeah. Or we are only focusing on one part uh, rather than looking at the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the grand scheme is kind of blurry at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. I still maintain that if you live in an environment where you're one broken artifact away from a frigid death, you probably shouldn't be there in the first place. I guess that comes to my ultimate question: 
why is the Crystal Empire where it is? What happened? Why is it a lot of PTSD? Well, well, that's post Sombra. Or maybe Princess Amori really was a terrible ruler, and they just don't want to remember how bad she was at this. (laughs) Uh, Probably, but um, Silver, what are your final thoughts, man? The Crystal Empire is brimming with potential, much like the ponies that reside within and Changeling for a time. And perhaps that's what makes it so frustrating to, to realize that potential will never, at least right now, it looks like it will never be utilized. And that's a depressing thought. I mean, you introduce something cool into a story, you really want to see it reach fruition. So I guess the challenge now is to fans who can adopt these ponies and come up with their own stories. There's always potential for creativity, if not in the show, than in the fandom. And Norman, what are your final thoughts on this place? Hmm, well, I seem to have confused my final thoughts with what I mentioned early on. But still, um, my final thoughts for this one is, for the Crystal Empire specifically, is that it has an abundance of potential oozing out of it. But the show creators or the writers or whatever it is, somehow are kind of neglecting it for whatever reason. There's so many things that we could have done for the previous seasons like um, with the start of season 3 we got the whole Sombra thing we could have done a lot of things reintroducing the Crystal Pony to the current world we could have a fish out of water story we could have a memorable character out of the Crystal Empire maybe a fish out of water getting uh, involved in some bad situation in Manhattan for example and uh, Main 6 Rarity and Applejack have to lead this pony away from all the bad stuff and whatnot. Like you could have so much ideas popping out of it, but unfortunately, no, because show writers didn't want to include that into the show. Um, a good example of how the show did a good job with introducing new characters to the world is um, Gabby. Gabby is a new character out of nowhere. We automatically like her because of her personality. And she's a kind of fish out of water kind of situation, but not really. So just imagine a crystal pony being that way, um, being bright eye and bushy tail kind of thing, where everything's new to her. Maybe you get Zootopia, who knows? But still, potential's there, and I do wish they do something with it in season seven. Alrighty. And the Sapphire Heart song, what are your feelings? Acton. I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. The Crystal Empire needs to get their. That's not a word. Together. Oh my. Well, there you go. And, Will Eisen, what do you think of Le Crystal Empire? Closing thoughts, Gu. I think the Crystal Empire, as everyone has said, does have potential. But I think the biggest thing that holds it back is just a uh, a lack of a solid foundation. We, we know what the Crystal uh, Empire feels like. It's supposed to be a place of, you know, light and love and joy. But... What makes it? What makes the citizens? Why do they live there? Why do they want to live there? What makes the Crystal Empire entirely unique, not only in thoughts, but also in hopes and dreams of its citizens? Well said. And unfortunately, these are not questions that we ourselves can answer. We are beholden to the show. However, again, this is a plea to all you listening out there. Be creative. If the show isn't going to explore this, you can. Heck, even if the show does explore it, don't don't be afraid to throw out your own ideas, because that's really part of the fun. Uh, so the Crystal Empire is there. It is ripe with potential. And if you can flesh out its citizenry and its rulers, more power to you. But next up on the MBS show, I believe we're going back to episode reviews. Ah, yes. Next week, we are back to episode reviews. And this one is going to be a fun one, because you know why? You, you know why? Try but try? No, because I roll my d20. Because next week's episode review is going to be Dungeon and Discord. Yay! Oh, oh my god, something fun! Oh, oh no. <laughs> D&D. That means we're going to be surrounded by nerds. What, what do you think we are right now? <laughs> um, geeks. Did, did you stumble into a different podcast there, Will Eisen? No, 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 no. We're a bunch of geeks right now. But the no, second you add mathematics, nerds. the second you add mathematics, you become a nerd. Is that how it arbitrarily works? Yes, yes. Nerds are the ones that are super smart, 
but geeks are the ones who are pop culture savvy. Although I would point out that you're you're counting us right now. <laughs> that is a form of math. Oh no! no! <laughs> hey Silver, wanna say it with me? Three, two, one. Nerd. Nerd! <laughs> Yeah, well, I am rubber, you are glue, bounces off me, it sticks to you. <laughs> uh, but still, that is for next week. And who knows, probably, if Will's interested, I know he plays D&D a lot, he tells it it is on his um, Tumblr blog. Yes, no? Oh, yeah, plenty of D&D stories. I got a zillion of them. Remind me to tell you about uh, Grog. Grog, the, ma- the man who basically learned... Hmm. Well, door is locked, and Grog cannot, uh, and Grog cannot break down the door. I roll to intimidate the wood. <laughs> and the wood was intimidated. Yes, and that's how he became. And that's how he got the skill and became, in the class profession, angry carpenter. <laughs> Excellent. Firstly, I'm always a fan of the killer gazebo. <laughs> And stay tuned to, as Safi figures out what the heck we're talking about. But for the MBS show, I have been the Silver Queen. I have been Roman Sanzo, laughing my butt off. I'm Sapphire Hartung, and I think I need some black pudding in my system or something. I don't know. I'm Willa Zen, and I'm going to find my dice. Where did I leave them? I better and, run before I become the obligatory princess of the... Uh, uh, no, no, you'd be the cleric, but to be honest, though, with your attitude, you strike me more as the uh, sor- uh, sorcerer type. No. Chaotic neutral. Send help! <laughs> if Sapphire's mind survives the next few minutes, we'll see you next week. Adios! See ya. Bye! Doodles. Roll for initiative! Uh... Uh, that's a one. That's a one. Um, so am I going good. to get kidnapped by a huge monster king? Now that would have been rarity. If she, I often wonder what would have happened if she jumped. Into the portal.